Thank you very much. And you're having fun, and that's good, because I that's that's all I've been doing all day long is having fun, messing with people. <laughs> that's right, and I'm gonna teach you one of my favorite tricks tonight. If you wanna have some real fun, take a day out, go into any busy building, and when you find an elevator and the door is open and it's full of people, I want you to walk in and punch every button. <laughs> for every floor. Then turn around and face everybody else with this crazy look on your face. And then when you know they're real afraid, say something real messed up like, I hope I don't have to kill nobody else today. <laughs> got to work, I have fun at work too, because I got a hot job. I do, because when I'm out on stage doing comedy, folks, what I do for a living, believe it or not, is I'm a firefighter. <laughs> oh, thank you. See, most people find that hard to believe because most people have this image built in their head of what firefighters should look like, and I know I don't fit the picture. <laughs> I, I, I had one guy got mad at me one night. He was so sure I was lying. He jumped up and he goes, hey, you're small, you're wimpy, you get in the fire. Who are you going to save? <laughs> me, okay? <laughs> I work for the city of Minneapolis. I've been on the job 12 years now, which I'm really proud of. And the city of Minneapolis was, thank you very much. And the city of Minneapolis was very happy to hire me, too, because I used to be an arsonist, all right? So, <laughs> you want to know what cracks me up, though? When I drive on the rigs now, and you go past little kids, and they see a little red fire truck or a big one, man, these kids, you, you've seen how they act. They're like, hot fireman, hot fireman, hot fireman, hot fireman, until their moms get sick, and they're like, shut up! Because, <laughs> see, I was never fascinated with fire trucks when I was little because I very rarely saw them. You let a police car go by me, that was a whole different story. <laughs> police car go by, I'd lose my mind. Hi, policeman, hi, policeman, hi, policeman. And then my uncle would get mad. He'd be like, Ellis, come here. Bring your old bucket head on over here, boy. What's wrong with you chasing after the police like that? A few years from now, you'll be running from them. <laughs> there's two things that crack me up about the fire service. Number one is the fact that for years, nobody knew anything about the fire department. We were like a secret society until they released the movie Backdraft. Now, I want to answer the one most asked question that people want to know all the time. They say, is the movie true? Well, the hazard factor that they show you in this movie is right on the money. However, because it is Hollywood, they do have these men doing some things that you wouldn't do if you were a firefighter. For instance, at the end of the movie, they're in this big, huge chemical warehouse plant. They got fire from the floor to the ceiling. 55-gallon drums of chemical stuff exploding everywhere. And then the top of the building on the catwalk is the movie star, <laughs> Kurt Russell, holding on to this other firefighter who's on flame from the waist down. <laughs> well, he was. <laughs> and this dude looks up at Kurt Russell and he goes, let me go. And with all the macho that was ever put in one man, Kurt Russell looked down at him and said, if you go, we go. Ha, I think not. <laughs> you think about it, you'd say the same thing I would. You look down and you go, are you sure? <laughs> The second thing that cracks me up, and that's the fact that since people know that our job deals with life and death, they think that we never see anything that's funny and that is totally untrue. Because in 12 years on the job, the one thing that stays the same and never changes is when we get calls for house fires. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but firefighters have all this heavy equipment that they have to put on. You have the boots, the pants, the coat, the tank, the helmet. You get on the rig, you bust out of the station, red lights and sirens, running people off the road everywhere. <laughs> well, because we have the power. <laughs> and you get a block away, and you can see the house. You see the smoke. You see the flame. And you always see this guy. Here! Here, the fire's here, dude! Right here! Come on! Come on! <laughs> Yeah. 
You know, like we got glaucoma or cataracts or something. <laughs> and sometimes, just to make them mad, we pass right on by them. <laughs> And oh, when you come back, you talking about mad. And they're waiting on you too. It's like, Christ, were you guys like blind or something? <laughs> well, yeah, man, we had trouble reading the Braille on the map and everything. <laughs> Thank you. Check this out. I did something today that I said I wasn't going to tell you, but because it's real embarrassing, but I figured that everybody in this room has done it at least once. I call it the world's most painful experience, stubbing your toe. <laughs> People go, <sighs> And you want to know the worst toe to stub? The little toe. Have you ever hit your little toe so hard you thought you knocked it right off your foot? <laughs> and you look down on the ground because you think it's going like this? <laughs> I got news for you. If you hit that toe just right, you will become James Brown. <laughs> you will. You'll be walking along, and all of a sudden it's like, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> oh no! I think I stubbed my toe. <laughs> please, 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 Maceo! I hit the little toe. Ew, ow, ow! <laughs> 